Aloha, worlds, and welcome to another episode of The Queer and the Queen. I'm Jacoby, act like you know me, Jones. And today I have two <laughs> of my favorite queens in the house with me today. We have my dear friend Dex and host and creator of the Complicated Discord podcast back with us. Welcome back to the show, Dex. And we also have a new queen who we have never met yet is Precious, the fine author. She is a writer for Baller Alert, a podcast host of the Cake Dish Podcast. And she is a current new author of an amazing book that's coming out soon on Valentine's, In the Wicked We Trust. Thank you both for being here. Before we get too far in this episode, make sure you subscribe, drop down on the notifications and ding on that button so you know when we post more episodes. Now let's get into this show. Are y'all ready? Let's do this. So today I want to talk about because you're a parent, Dex, and you're a black woman with an opinion who I love and appreciate. Kim Kardashian and Kanye West are in the biggest oh. divorce and feud of the century. Now, apparently, he is like slandering her all through social media, claiming that he is she is trying to like make him look bad and accuse him of all this toxicity and that he's trying to manipulate the children and things like that. He bought the house next to Kim because he claims that she has been refusing. <laughs> to let her let him see the children the things that i researched is they're going through divorce custody she has the children he wants to see the children she wants him to be supervised because of his mental health what do mm -hmm. you think about for one children being used as pawns in relationships and in divorces and for two a person with mental health issues who still wants to be able to see their children unsupervised well, Dick, want to go? Cause you're the parent here. I mean, yeah, yeah. Well, listen, I, I will say I never agreed with anyone using kids as pawns because that's, um, especially nowadays, you get a lot of conversation about how a lot of, uh, you know, dads don't want to be in their kids' lives, but then mm -hmm. no one talks about the times where the dads <laughs> do want to be in the kids' lives, but the mom is using the kids as a bargaining chip or a way to get income because of child support, you know? Mm -hmm. Using kids as a pawn is a shitty thing to do because at the end of the day, the kid is the one that suffers. When that kid mm -hmm. grows up feeling like their, their dad or their mom doesn't love them or want to see them or want to be around them, only to find out later on that, hey, we've been trying. It's the other person was kind of using you as leverage to get what they want. You know, mm -hmm. it, it scars them. They have, they have this 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 feeling of why was i not good enough like that one episode of the fresh prince where will was like i don't know my dad but why didn't he want me why, why didn't, didn't he, he want me i grew up with that i completely i completely grew up thinking why did my father not want me and then you grow up and you realize well, you know that that's their problem and not yours but he kanye I, wants to be there the real issue is his mental health but what do you think precious well um i do agree you don't never use kids as pawns because they being pulled in both directions and they're so young they don't understand why they being pulled in so many directions as far as his mental health i get what she's saying but also kim girl you've been about his mental health issues and it was so it was i don't want to say it was beneficial because kim then had the bag but you get with kanye it's just more beneficial. So he been had these mental health issues. He been spazzed and we seen him. And you continue to have babies with this psycho. Well, he's not a psycho, but you continue to have babies with someone who You continue has to mental have health. babies. You continue oh, to let them grow your skims, friend. You continue to, you know, build this legacy with this person because it was good for the optics. But now y'all separated going through and it's like his mental health, his mental health, but it's been that. We seen him on a fake campaign trail rambling, talking out of his mind. Like, you don't even have to be well versed on mental health to know that something was going on. Right. When he was doing that, I remember the one campaign, he was making no sense. And he he just broke down crying at the little campaign rally he was doing. Like, you could tell something not going on. And that's when she came out and said she been trying to get him on medication. Like, He's 51, having a 50, um, all yeah, that. He, but he, he got too much episode. money. He can fight everything. He can fight everything. So, you know, I I agree with the mental health, but I don't think it's fair that you want to pull that car right now because it's convenient. I don't right. like that. And then you you put in the kids in it. If you if you genuinely concerned that he's unstable around your kids, I'm with you. Like, do what you need to do. But 
if he unstable now around your kids, that means he been unstable around your kids. So, you know, you just, you can't really have it both. Both ways. Yeah. You just what what did you want to say, ways. Dax? You seem like you want to, what did you want to say? I, I did. I agree with what she just said right there. Here's the thing. Having, having mental shortcomings does not necessarily make you a bad parent. Right. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean that you're going to treat your kids any differently. And right. if, well, we do, well, okay, let me ask you this real quick. It doesn't make you a bad parent, but it does make you a dangerous parent. Hold on. Hold on. It might. If you might, up to yeah. this point have been showing tendencies of doing stuff like that. But if I've been a good father from day one and you knew I had mental issues and you left me alone with these kids before and you've gone your way, <laughs> you know, you, know what? you can't. You can't now say, oh, well, now that we're not together, I feel like he's a danger. I wasn't a danger before. Right, right. I've been around because right. all of their lives because... are taking care of him. You've left me yes. to go modeling. Now, all of a sudden, I ain't shit as a parent. That that brings up some some questions for me. In my I think opinion. that her concern probably, because I think that she th- knows that he would never hurt the children. But mm-hmm. I think that she's concerned of the influence he can give the children and the influence mm-hmm. can be dangerous. But what I do agree with Dex and what you said too is it's too late for that. You shouldn't have mm-hmm. babies with somebody. This is why you evaluate a person before you start reproducing with a person. You can't like mm-hmm. you knew what he, he was and ain't nothing you can do. <laughs> he can provide financially and he won't harm them. You don't like his personality. That's a personal vendetta that you have. They don't mm-hmm. got nothing to do with how he can father. So I didn't really think about right. it like that until we had this conversation right now. And it's true because he he has he might be mentally unstable and in in ways of expressing himself in society and things going on in pop culture and things Mm -hmm. like that but he has never there has never been a history of him harming his kids so right right exactly and if i feel like if he want to be in his kids life divorce is hard enough not only are y'all divorcing y'all divorcing in the public eye in front of everybody everybody Mm -hmm. got an opinion on y'all your kids how you parenting so that's hard enough let so, him so he his argument now is that she has given Kim has given North access to TikTok and he doesn't right. think <clears throat> she should be on social media. Now, th- I was torn mm. with this because this mm-hmm. is the narcissism of him coming out. He can't control how if, if, you, if you, you you married a woman, you hate social media, you hate being on in the public eye, but you married the superstar of the world. You know what I mean? Queen of social you, media. Right. You hate Queen of that, social media. Okay. Right. You hate that, you know, you don't trust his his shenanigans, his antics, but you marry this person that's mentally unstable. So exactly. I think it's a little bit ridiculous that he's ranting and rambling about TikTok and not wanting his daughter on TikTok. But this is how this is what they this is what his her mama do. And to be exactly. fair, she is North. This is what I re- researched. North has a cell phone. The TikTok account is on a separate cell phone that Kim has access to. Right. And she only gets the cell phone when she has to have ask her mom, can she have it? Can she post a video about this? Can she use it? But it's not something that she can just do willy nilly. It is a right. controlled environment. Jacoby. And he still don't like it. I think he just doesn't like it because of his narcissism and his control issues. Listen, here's the thing with that. I'm not sure how deep into TikTok you've di- dove, diven, d- dive. The point is, I don't know. (laughs) The the point is, I have somehow, I don't know how, have been introduced to a side of TikTok that I never knew existed. TikTok Mm -hmm. having some filth on it. Let me tell you, Mm -hmm. there's times where I'm like, man, I wouldn't want my kids on TikTok. Jesus Christ. Some some of the stuff that just you know, TikTok, there's no way to control it, and it's not even mm-hmm. just like there, there. Don't get me wrong. There's a there's a fair amount of a sexual air on there, but even without that, you also have like you said, there's misogyny all over the place. There's misandry. There's racism. TikTok has no control over who gets to see what, and they just right. they push these things out to everyone. So I can kind of understand him saying, "Well, I don't want her on TikTok," but but I do agree with you that you know what you got with someone who used social media as their platform to to get where they are and that's the entire family and at mm-hmm. some point you're doing the same thing when it comes to your clothing line and everything so you can't sit down and say i don't want my daughter on like that's it, that's one of those do as i say not as i do type situations right right, right. right. and I, I talked about this on my podcast i'm so torn about it like on one hand i get it I think kids should definitely put the phone down, go outside. I've seen two little boys outside playing 
today, it just made my heart flutter because I ain't seen kids outside playing in a long time, like just running around playing. So I think kids definitely should, you know, step outside social media because it is a lot of adult things that I think she's eight or something like that. Yeah, eight so or nine. That, yeah. yeah, eight or nine. So it's stuff that she shouldn't be exposed to. I get it. On the flip side of that, you give her a cell phone, you give her a tablet, you let her watch YouTube. Like, what? I do think, though, that this is an interesting divorce in a parental situation because mm -hmm. he's a control maniac. A control mm -hmm. maniac. Genius, musical genius, clothing genius, design genius, architectural genius. I think his brain is amazing and beautiful, but his personality is warped. <laughs> you know what right. I mean? His yeah. personality is a little warped. Yeah, and I think with Kim and North's situation, from my understanding, it's a joint account. So Kim has access 24 hours to this account. Right. It's not just North picking up the phone and TikTok. It's very controlled. Her use of TikTok, from what I can see, is really controlled from what I was reading. I don't think people can DM her. It's right. just certain little settings they got. So... I don't see a problem with it, but he is the dad. I think he should have some say so in it, but an opinion. I just, but I he only gets that. say so in his household. When she come to your house, don't let her use TikTok. Okay. But when she come to my house, she oh, use it. But if you're the parent, the see, this is why I wanted you on this episode too, because you're the parent. So what would you think about that? Dad? Right. Well, hold on. See, and that's what I'm saying. I, I I feel like at the end of the day, when it comes to parenting, it's very, very important that you both agree on certain things. You understand? Because yeah. when you when you set a standard of you could do this at your mom's house, but not at my house, that's already setting a bad standard, in my personal opinion. You understand? Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, I, I agree. He absolutely But they, they're not on good terms. So I see, but see, but that's the point. See, here's the problem with that. And I, I'm gonna say this flat out. A lot of parents have this 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 thing where they think about, oh, when it comes to deciding our kids' futures and what they do, it's about our relationship. I don't have to like you as a person for us to sh for us to be able to be civil enough to take care of our children. You understand? We can hate each fair, other. Kanye is the one going into social media and using social media to discredit slander and make Kim look bad. Kim right. is not going out there saying right. negative things about Kanye. Well, She's no, no, going no. out there saying, I wish he would stop this because he doesn't realize right. how it's affecting our children that you want to talk negatively about me as their mother. Have, have, you, you, know ever, I mean? have, have you ever thought maybe the reason Kanye has an issue with his um, daughter being on like TikTok and social media is because of kind of the way he sees his, his wife, got, the ex-wife had got started. Because I mean, let's be perfectly honest. Maybe. Her, a lot of her fame came from a certain tape that was on social media that we all yeah. watched I mean, a bunch yeah. of times. But that, you know. that I mean, I, he, I mean, I could, I, I could understand as a father, you're trying to, you don't want her to go down this road that she's so addicted to social media, she starts doing ridiculous things. Right. So I, I get that. It is other ways to do it without discrediting and slandering and hurting each other. You know what I mean? And he yes. is the one who, well, if I don't get what I want, now I'm going to act like a baby. You know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, he. Pro I'm sure he has sat down and he has his reasons why he don't want her to talk. It could be like you said, you know, he don't want her to do crazy things on the internet. Her mom could have got, I mean, well, the way her mom got started and all that. But from where I'm sitting, it just, it looks like more control, kind of. It just, mm -hmm. it really don't even look like he got a real issue with her. It's just kind of one other thing to get at Kim. Right. From what I'm looking at, because it, it's been all public and a lot of slander. He could have his reasons, but he didn't really list no reasons. It right. all just kind of look at another like jab at Kim and her right. parenting. Right. Kind of like, like a, a petty, a petty, hey, you said this song yeah. go against you just because. I mean, because he did go against um Dave Pete Davidson. He made a song or right. something. Right. Right. Yeah. Something about it. Right. He just mad that he ain't getting what he wants, so he acting like a baby. Okay. So yeah. with all this being said. Speaking of big babies, 
I just saw this thing with Joe Rogan and they were comparing him to Howard Stern. So Joe is uh-huh. in the moment of the cancel culture. Apparently, he's been saying a lot of dishonest and outlandish things about the COVID-19 and the, the vaccination mm-hmm. and the way that it's being portrayed to the world and in the media. And he also has used the N-word in the sense of he's felt free enough to use the N-word in quoting other people and or quoting lyrics, right? And he has recently, as of this morning, has 70 of his episodes from Spotify been removed. And I believe his contract is under reevaluation. And what do you think for one of this whole situation <laughs> with him I? being canceled? You can you go first because I you you in this world. One, the canceling of all of this, and two, how he's handling like like the the concept of the n-word thing everything like what do you think okay first of all black people this is not our fight because if they didn't cancel him when he was saying the n-word i don't want to hear it period so now y'all want to cancel him because he might have said something that you didn't like about the vaccine about whatever whatever now everybody's like oh no 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 but when he was running around him saying nigga this nigga that <sighs> oh it was so okay cool but now we want to reevaluate no 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 this and is this just not started. our fight Indiari. So apparently, this what well, some some musician, oh. some old white man, yeah. asked to have his music removed because he said dishonest and mistruths about COVID nineteen. Neil Young. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So yep. then that, and now Indiari joined the bandwagon, but she also threw in the mix. He's been saying the n word for years, and I don't <laughs> like it. Which I honestly kind of didn't know. I kind of had never paid know. attention to it. But he do. I, I, I believe it because what I can tell about Joe Rogan is Joe. Joe Rogan is one of those people who likes to just do things to get a rise out of people. I don't think he's mm-hmm. racist. I just think that he mm-hmm. thinks he's one of those people where it's just a word. If you can say it, I can say it too. Yeah. What do you think, Dex? I just got a you quick go question. Ahead. Excuse my ignorance, but um, is Joe Rogan a white man? Yes. yes. Joe Rogan is the most highest paid podcaster. And he has a... he. I mean, like, no, 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 I know yeah. what he does. I, in fact, I used to watch him in um, news radio way, Actually, way, way I think he's Italian. Or Sicilian or something like that. I, I think he's so a too. white man. He's white. He's a white man. He's white. He's a white man. And so, he has Napoleon concept because the motherfucker's like five foot two. So hold on. Come on, man. Here, here's my thing. Here, here's my thing. Why does he um, even have an opinion? <laughs> I actually agree with you, uh, uh, Precious. At the end of the day, if you didn't have an issue with it all this time, now isn't the day for you to be like, oh, that's that's my that's now I now I got a concern because he's something that yep. didn't fall into line with you. And I, I do kind of feel like maybe if this whole thing about the whole COVID misinformation didn't come out, there would be no issue with him saying nigga this, nigga that, nope. nigga this, nigga that. Like, right. I, nope. I, I, I feel where she's coming from. It's kind of like, yo, either, if, if that's the hill you want to die on, then die on it. But don't don't get shot and crawl back and forth between the two hills trying to figure out what it is you're going to complain about. Yeah. And recently, before this whole cancel him came out, like a few weeks ago, he had somebody on the show and they was talking about black people and he was saying like well i think you calling yourself a black person is ignorant if you're light-skinned and he just went on this whole like anti-black rant because i did an article about it and nobody said a word like it was not a peep it was not a nothing but the moment he says you know he's spreading the misinformation about covid which is bad that you know that is bad but now it's like cancel, cancel, cancel. They're now they're looking Neil Young, for a reason. They're looking for things to to like bring him down. Can I be honest? Yeah, about but something? even when India Ire now when Neil Young came out, it was kind of like okay, you know, we could look at this. But I seen when when India Ire said, you know, she didn't want her music on the platform. It was like, oh well, good riddance, girl. Ain't nobody streaming you like that. <laughs> mm. <laughs> girl, that's why I say black people, child. This ain't even our fight for real because. They didn't give a damn about pulling your music off India Ari. Like they didn't really care. So Yeah, and he still they what they did out of just trying to not be insensitive is they removed the 70 shows where he has referenced the N-word. So it was yeah. 70 episodes between the N-word and COVID. There were 70 episodes that they removed that they took <laughs> down just for to be sent like to be sensitive to people's feelings behind the whole controversy right but i you know i'm torn because i really think mm-hmm. that it is appropriate to have freedom of speech i mm-hmm. really do i'm glad you said that jacoby because here's my thing about this whole uh they feeling some type of way about his 
COVID misinformation, right? Mm-hmm. We all know who Joe Rogan is. This man is not a doctor. He is not a scientist. Right. At the end of the day, if he says some shit that doesn't fall in line with the COVID guidelines, what is stopping you from going and researching it yourself? Right. We shouldn't right. be taking right. damn uh, uh, medical advice from someone who doesn't hold a medical degree. At the end of the day, That's and true. just like you said, when it comes to when it comes to um, uh, uh, freedom of speech, yeah, if it's his show, he should be able to say COVID doesn't exist. I don't. I don't believe in it. It's it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a damn cold that they made on Mars and and dropped in a spaceship to spread over the planet. And at the mm-hmm. end of the day, so what? It's his show. He can say whatever he wants to as a uh, as a see, as, as a full grown adult. See, but that's the thing. See, the where where it gets where it gets iffy or sticky is it's his show on a corporate platform. So he works for a corporation, and a corporation has consumers. And we, as a consumer, if we have an uprising, the corporation has to give a fuck if they want to continue to have our views, which is where they sell right. their marketing, which is where they make their advertising, which is where they make their money. So no, it's no, a no. whole chain effect of. It's his well, platform, but it's not. Well, you're right, but can't think about this. Before Joe Rogan's show starts, or I think even somewhere in the shows, it says the the uh, the ideas of Joe Rogan or Joe Rogan's ideas and just his ideas. That may not be the exact feeling of the corporation or the broadcaster or the show. That's just him talking his shit. You understand what I'm saying? Right. So right. at the end of the day, if Joe Rogan says, "Hey, I I, I feel like um, what was that fool's name? That that fighter? Ah, oh, shit." Let's say Joe Rogan says, I feel like Jacoby's the best MMA fighter in the world. And Jacoby's like, bro, I've never MMA fought a day in my life. That's his opinion. He can say whatever the hell he wants. Mm-hmm. Don't nobody got to take it seriously. And as an adult, if if you something that I don't like, either A, I won't listen to the motherfucker, or B, I'll go research it myself. But right. I'm not going to get right. all mad because Jacoby said, hey, all straight men, you know, look at dicks in the shower. Okay, he said it. What, the, I, what, what, is, what, what does it mean to me? I, I, I don't care. Do you, Dex? Right. Let's talk about that. <laughs> do you? <laughs> listen, I absolutely do, goddammit. I'm not ashamed to say it. I need to see where I measure up. Listen, don't listen. Now they're going to judge me. Now they're going to judge me. I need to make sure. I need but to make you sure know what, though? It makes me. Because if not, I got to leave and shower later on and everyone else. Mm, listen, I'm not embarrassing myself. With everything you just <laughs> said, though, like you just made me think of really this boils down to the sensitivity of people and their emotions and everything. With that being said, I like to do a little segment. We do a little hot and spicy question and answer. Are you down to answer some hot and spicy questions? I think so. (laughs) Are you down, Dex? Are you down, I'm down to pound. So I'm gonna ask a series of questions and you just answer in the best way you can. First question (laughs) is the top two places that you like or the two things that you like to do naked the top two things i like to do nick i like to clean my house naked <laughs> <laughs> i like to clean my house naked and i have like a, i have like a stairmaster in my house <laughs> so i like to like work on my stairmaster naked, naked. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! You know I got my body done, so I'd be like, I just be going to be on my list. That, like I'm in a Kanye West workout plan video or whatever. You know what? This is gonna sound kind of weird. I like to like sleep naked in hotels. Mm. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. I do. You know what? I, I was did that, and the maid, I, like I put the, the don't disturb, and the maid was coming in. I'm sitting here like, ah, ah, ah. you know what the hell with it? Oh. Yeah, you're, just gonna, you're just gonna see it. You're just gonna see it. Okay. And. uh I, hmm. like being I would say I kind of like to, I, I, I like to I like to walk around the house, you know, with my, all my windows open and see how much it, it's don't judge me. OK, I, I, <laughs> wait, 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 where are your children when this is happening? When they're not here, of course. OK, all right. Not home, Jacob. Uh, because <laughs> I mean, you know, some pa- I, I know some parents. I know some parents. Of course, you know. All right. OK, so second question. Where's the freakiest or craziest place that you've actually had sexual relations? At a park. Ooh. I think the park. That's the, that's the craziest thing you've done? Like outdoor, that's the most. Yeah. I like, yeah, I, at the park, I think was the craziest. I'm an AC kind of girl. I need, <laughs> I need an AC at home. <laughs> the park was kind of like extreme for me, Chad. I think that's right. the worst. Thing. Okay, Jax. I, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I've had a lot of, you know, backseat sex in my days. So that is so interesting. I have not. I have not had a lot of backseat. Never. Sex. I don't know what you're missing. I have it's done it, but I have not done it a lot. I've done it like maybe, okay. maybe five times, if not three or four. 
Yeah, no. Ooh, you know what? I like, I, I, nigga, I like, I need, I need motion. I need to be able to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I need, I need <laughs> space. Yeah. On the side of the highway in broad daylight. Well, midday. Okay, now that's kinky. That's kinky. Okay. That's kinky. Well, the was, she had a kid and the kid wouldn't go to sleep. They wouldn't take its nap. And I was like, let's go to McDonald's. Wow. <laughs> Don't judge me. Wow. Okay. I'm, judging. I'm judging. I'm judging. Okay. Okay. How many people have you slept with in one day? <gasps> like, oh. how many people you done took down there? Not at one time. Well, it could be at one time, but <laughs> one day. I'm sitting here like, I'm sitting here like, am I supposed to tell the truth right now? <laughs> like, oh, Dex, you go first. Oh, God. You know what? <laughs> back in my, back when I was younger, as a, when I was a teenager, I hit the player's hat trick. I caught three in one day. Oh, you had to be tired. I was, a, I was a teenager. You know, I, you, oh, know, you had kid, energy. Yeah, when you get teenager hard, like you could literally push your penis through a brick wall all day, every day. You don't there. You don't need energy. Like you, 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 you live like you are Red Bull in your veins. You live off of sex. That's it. That's all sex and, and junk food. I know I'm about to be judged. I know I'm about to be judged. But I'm just going to go ahead and tell the truth. In one day. Probably like 10. I'm sorry. Now what now? <laughs> <laughs> well thank you so much guys for being here this has been such a fun episode i really wanted to talk about these topics i'm so happy to have your opinions and views i'm going to link you guys and everything dex is the host of complicated discord miss precious is the host of the cake dish podcast and i'm going to link everything in she has a book coming out dex has a bartending thing that he's doing that's really amazing if you're in the florida hey. area yeah thanks so much for being here love your yourselves as we always say and don't forget to smile